Hello and praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Joshua Glick. And I'm Leah Glick. And we're part of the Journey Up Church. We're so excited to have each and every one of you join us here today for another edition of our cyber service. If you enjoyed today's service or if it ministered to you in any way, please feel free to like it, comment, reach out to us. Um, if you feel like someone else could use it, please feel free to share it. And more importantly, if you need a Bible study or would like to learn more about God, reach out to us. We would be more than happy to sit down with you and talk about God and, and just go on this journey with you. And for our Journey Up family, we now also have the ability to give online. And so to do that, you can go to our website at Our Journey Up. Dot org. We pray today that this message blesses you and go with God in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, is anybody ready to have church today? I'm ready, to, I'm ready to have church. I'm ready to worship the Lord and give God praise and glory, all the honor today. And, and I know we, we will probably have just a couple more folks, hopefully a couple more folks uh, come into the building here, uh, the house, should I say. <laughs> and uh, I hope that's not a distraction, but we want to entertain the presence of God. We want the Lord to, to have his way in this service. So why don't we just, on the onset, why don't we just invite the God into the this, into this service, into our hearts and lives well, Lord, we love you, God. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for your grace. God, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy. God, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost today. This is a day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, and we invite you, God, into this service. We invite you, God, into this house, God, today. Lord, let this basement become a sanctuary. God, let this be a place where your spirit can dwell today and challenge us, God, and move in our hearts today. Draw us closer to you, God, I pray today. Day. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we lift you up, as we give you all the glory, God, as we give you all the honor and praise today, hallelujah, and we're going to love you. We're going to praise you for the victory. God, we're going to give you the honor, Lord, today. We're going to worship you and give you all the glory, amen, for the victory. The battle is not ours. It belongs to you today, hallelujah. Praise God and let your spirit move, God, in this house today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Burdens. 
than he that is within the world. Amen. I'm glad that God is fighting on our side. Amen. And God is victorious. I'm glad I know how this God all is ends. Amen. Us, yes, God. Lighting up the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it. today hallelujah praise god we love you lord we praise you god we lift you up we give you all the glory amen hallelujah let the king of glory let him reign in this place let him reign in this service let him reign in our hearts and our lives today amen i don't just want him to rule this nation or rule this world but i want him to rule my heart amen and take control of my life in jesus name and i believe i believe he wants to do that in this house today Hallelujah, God, in Jesus' name. You're the God of this city. Yes, God. You're, You're the, the king, king of, of this people. people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace for the restless. And you are. in my heart. Lord, we love you, God, and I praise you. Let's just lift up the name of the Lord in this house today. God, we love you, Lord, and we praise you. Hallelujah. I believe, God, there are greater things 
God, there are greater things that, have, that you're going to do, I believe, in our hearts and lives. In this city, God, there are greater things in this church. There are greater things, greater miracles, greater blessings. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we love you and we praise you, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise in the name of Jesus. And let the King of glory, let him reign in this house. Let him reign in this place today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this house. My Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Bow down and say you are. Oh, I love you, God. I praise you, Jesus. Every man. Yes, God. Every knee shall bow. So let's start right yes, God. now. Oh, hallelujah. Why would we wait? King of glory. Yes, God. Feel this place. Feel our hearts. This place. We just want to be with you. Yes, God. Dance in your presence, dance in your presence. 
your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence. Oh, I'm gonna sing hallelujah. Yes, God. Oh, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, God, and I praise you, Jesus. Oh, I'll sing hallelujah. We just want to be with you, Lord. We just want to be with you. King of glory, feel this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Can you feel his presence? Lord, we love you, God. We praise you. We just want to we just want to be touched by you, God. We just want to feel you, Lord. Amen. Acts, Acts 17 and 27 says that they should uh, seek after the Lord if they can feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Amen. And he's in this house today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. We love you, Jesus. Yes, God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I praise you, God. Amen. Why don't we lift up our hands and our hearts one more time? Amen. Just give God some praise in this house. He is worthy of all the glory. He is worthy of all the honor. Amen. We love you, God, and we praise you, Lord. We worship you, God. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Jesus. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. We love you and we exalt you, God. We worship you and we praise you, Jesus. Amen. I love you, God, and I exalt you. Praise God. Why don't we just put our hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. He is worthy. He is so worthy today. Amen. Of all of our praise. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And and while we're, we're standing here today, we're just going to go right ahead and enter into a place of prayer. Amen. While we feel the Spirit, the spirit of the Lord, while God is here, we're just going to enter into that place, that secret place today. Amen. And we're going to ask God to begin to move and to minister inside of our hearts and our lives today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Does anybody have any special prayer requests here today? Amen. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Kite family. Amen. In, amen. In Jesus' name, we'll lift up the Kite family as well. Praise God. We'll continue to also to lift up this nation uh, before the Lord as well. Amen. And how many has a special unspoken request today? Amen. Hallelujah. I, I got a couple. <laughs> amen. I can't see it, but I'm, I'm lifting up my feet too. Hey, if I could. But uh, hey, man, let's go before the Lord of God uh, in prayer. And let's just pray f- that this uh, uh, that God has his way inside of these spoken requests and the unspoken requests as well. Amen. Lord, we love you, Jesus. And we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. God, I thank you, Lord, for your spirit today. I thank you for what we feel in the house of God. And I pray, Lord, that your spirit, God, would continue to move and minister in this house today. I pray, God, that you would touch, God, the Kite family. Let your spirit, God, continue to work and to minister in the midst of this precious family. God, and we lift up, Lord, today. We lift up, God, this nation to you, Lord. Amen. We, we, we're going to keep on knocking on your door, God. We're going to keep on lifting up this great country unto you, Jesus, Lord, for it's in your hands. It's in your care. Amen. And we, we give it to you, Lord. Amen. And we're not going to let a spirit of fear, amen, hallelujah, uh, uh, confront us, but you have given us a spirit of power and a love and a sound mind. And I pray, God, help the church in this 
hour to move forward. God, help the men and women of God to move forward. God, to move up. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this nation, God, let it be lifted up, God, unto you today in the name of Jesus Christ. And we love you, God, and we praise you, and we worship you, God, and we give you all the glory. My God, we give you all the honor and praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you. Why don't we just give God some praise for this country? Amen. We love you, Lord. We give you glory. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing and what you're going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am convinced that there's more for us than against us. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, I pray sometimes that, that God would just open up our spiritual eyes to see exactly what God is doing in this hour. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. I, I'm encouraged today in my spirit. Amen. And uh, we are going to just very quickly, we're going to take up the offering. And, uh, and as we take up the offering, praise God, we're going to pray that God would bless it. Amen. And then we want to just greet each and every one. It might be a good opportunity to grab a couple chairs. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, praying that, uh, amen, God's, God's filling up the house. Amen. We're just going to have to we're going to have to find another place. That's the bottom line. Amen. Pra praise God. Lord, we love you, God, today. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. God, I thank you, Lord, for the ability to give to you. Lord, God, you have blessed this church. God, and I pray, God, that you would, God, bless every individual, God, that is given unto you. And bless those that have not, God. I pray in the name so that they can. Lord, be a blessing unto your kingdom. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless this offering. Multiply it, God, for your kingdom, for your purpose in this hour. God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And amen. Praise God. God bless each and every one of you as you give to the Lord. Take some time. Welcome one another. And uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Sacrifice. 
you, God, and we praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, I lift you up, God. I give you glory, God. I give you honor. I give you praise. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, amen. Does anybody love to worship the Lord? Praise God, praise God. You know, I don't know if anybody noticed, but uh, uh, there was a, a silent sign on the night when it, but right before you came through these doors here, and that doesn't mean to be silent. Amen. Praise God. I believe that God wants to hear our praise. God wants to hear our worship. Amen. It's just our Christmas decoration on my silent night. So, <laughs> amen. Praise God. But we're going to worship him. We're going to give God some glory. We're going to give God honor and praise. Amen. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, and, and worship the Lord. And, and I hope somebody is going to help me preach the word of God here today. Amen. I do have a message that I, fe I feel on my heart. Amen. And now is not the hour to fear. Amen. I'll say it again. Now is not the hour to fear. Hallelujah. Now is the time to, to move forward. Amen. And then trust in the Lord. And I believe God. God has all, everything in control. All things are in his hands. Amen. And ev everything is in control today. I believe it in Jesus' name. We want to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 33 and verse 1 here. And as you're uh, getting ready to uh, turning in scripture, let me just say it's so good to have Rachel Keith with us today, all the way from, I, you know, they, they desired to go to a good church and they had to go all the way <laughs> from Idaho to Virginia uh, just to find a good church. So y'all are so lucky to be here in the house of God. I can just tell you, amen. They are, we're so thankful to have them with us and spend a little time with us and probably it'll take us about a month to get our kids back unspoiled after they're gone. Amen. But we always appreciate having them with us. And uh, uh, it's far and few between, but uh, uh, we're so thankful to have them with us here today as well. Amen. And I want to just say, too, thank, I appreciate you all being so patient with me trying to work this computer and, and do praise and worship. And, and we're just trying to figure all this out as we move forward here. But uh, uh, whenever we do have another space, amen, we got a totally different setup. So, amen. Uh, praise God. So I appreciate you all's patience with me as I try to navigate these songs and get all the words wrong and all that kind of stuff. But hallelujah. Amen. That's not going to detract our praise and worship, is it? <laughs> amen. Praise God. So I just want to say thank you uh, uh, for, amen, not being too mean to me uh, and, and bearing through all of that. But uh, uh, Genesis chapter 33 and verse 1, that's a, a, a familiar passage of scripture with uh, Jacob. It says, now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel. So good to have Leah and Rachel with us. <laughs> divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maidservants, Genesis 33 and 1. And if you allow me just for a few moments today, I want to preach on a subject. Here comes Esau. Here comes Esau. Here he comes. Lord, we love you, God, today. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. God, and we know that today that you are greater than any mountain. Lord, you are greater than any obstacle, than any giant, God, than any trial that we might face in this life. Amen. And help us, God. Remove us, God. Remove any fear. Remove, Lord God, anything that may try to obstruct, God, the things that you desire to put inside of us today. God, for you, I, I've said it before, you have not given us that spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. And I pray, God, let that begin to operate in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Let us not pay attention to fear. Let us not, Lord God, give in to fear. God, but let your spirit, God, rule and reign in our hearts and lives, even in this service today. My God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and amen. I'm going to talk a little bit today about fear. Is that all right? Now, the instinct of fear is deeply rooted in our nature. Now, some years ago, Basil King, he wrote a book called The Conquest of of fear. 
And he prefaced the book with these words. He said, when I say that during my life I have been prey to fear, I take it that I am expressing the case for most people. I cannot remember the time when a dread of one kind or another was not in the air in my life. In childhood, it was a fear of going to bed, fear of the dark. Later, it was the, the fear of the first day of school, what might happen. And still later, the experience in the morning of just waking up with a feeling of dismay at the moment of work to be done before nightfall. Now, in one form or another, fear will try to follow every one of us in our lives. The mother's afraid for her children. The father afraid for his business. The clerk afraid for his job. Hardly a man that is not afraid that some other man will do him harm or his family harm. Hardly a woman who is not afraid that what she craves will be denied her or that what she loves will be someday snatched away from her. I am ready to guess that all the miseries wrought by sin and sickness put together would not equal the self-affliction of abuse we often put ourselves through, through fear. Not because of what has uh, or has not happened in life, but because we fear of the possibility. We fear of what could be. We fear of the unknown. We fear what may or what may not happen in life. It's all because of fear. Most of us do spend far too much time in our lives just plain and simply of being afraid. Now, I, I think that this was true probably in the life of Jacob. He lived so much of his life just spent in fear. You see, sin casts a long shadow. Longer than the sinner ever imagines at the time that he sins. And it was 20 years for Jacob, almost a whole generation as men count time, since Jacob had fled the land of Canaan after deceiving his father and defrauding his brother Esau at Bethel on the way down to Mesopotamia. He had had the wonderful vision of the ladder let down from heaven and the angels of God ascending and descending. But since then, Jacob still had the fear of Esau upon his heart. Esau was out to kill him. Esau was offended. Esau was, was upset at him. So, the, so the, the plague of the fear of Esau was continually upon his heart. Here comes Esau. And after 20 years, Jacob was on his way back to his father's country. And Jacob this time was quite different from the solitary fugitive who had fled from his father's encampment with nothing but a staff in his hand. Now this Jacob, this Jacob was a prosperous man. Uh, this Jacob had fought back and forth with Laban, and he had won. He had fought with the world and for fortune, and he had come off victorious in life. But with numerous flocks and herds and his wives and children and followers, Jacob was now on his way back to Canaan. And yet, he was still uneasy. He still was unhappy. There's still something unsettling in his life. There was an undercurrent. He might not have been able to put his finger on it. Amen. But there was something that haunted his life by his brother Esau. Why? Because, you see, uh, Jacob was approaching the borderland of Seir, where his brother Esau lived. And when he thought of Esau, Jacob remembered the crime that he had committed against him. And he was uneasy. He was afraid. He had thought of it during the 20 years in which he wrestled with the world and, and prosperity in the home of Laban. Daily events and daily cares and pleasures and success had not blotted out the memory of the transgression and sin that happened in Jacob's life. And I just wonder sometimes, folks, I wonder sometimes how many men and how many women of God on their way to heaven's gates, they live their lives in fear and worry and anxiety over maybe a past transgression, a past sin. But with the promise of God in one hand and with God's children in heaven's host at their side, they silently walk towards the streets of gold, living in fear of past mistakes, living in fear of haunting sins that they're that they think may come try to come back to bite them in their lives. 
And even though God himself had forgiven them of their sins, even though blessings and success has followed them in their lives, there's still something unsettling. There's still something uneasy in their lives that they're scared of. Even though God himself had forgiven them, they cannot find the place in their lives to begin to forgive themselves. 20 years, 20 years, surely, Jacob thought to himself, that is long enough to dull the memory of what I did to Esau. Now the likelihood is that he feared that his sin was now going to find him out. It will find him out as he drew near to the borders of Seir. Esau's coming. Esau is on his way. Esau is going to come back. That reckoning day is going to come in my life, Jacob might have thought. Unrepentant sin will find a man out. Somebody can say amen to that. Unrepented, unrepented sin will find a, 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 a will find a man out. Finally and inevitably and inexorably in eternity, it will find you out. And that's why we have an altar. That's why after we preach, we have an opportunity to talk to God. That's why we, we gather together in prayer. That's why we, uh, we, we are here for support with one another. Let me just pause to say, and this isn't in my notes, we're not here to tear anybody down here today. We're not here to try to beat anybody down or, or to try to press them to the ground. But we're here to lift one another up, to help each other up. If you have fallen, amen, we're here to help you back on your way, get back back on your journey, get back on the, the right street, the straight street and the narrow way, amen, but God has provided us, even in the service today, a time that we can talk and repent to God, amen, if you repent of your sins, that's not a that's not a time, amen, to be fearful that it's going to come back to haunt you, if you repent, truly repent of your sins, amen, God is just to forgive you. Wondering what is in store for him. Filled with dread at the approach of Esau coming. And also with this nameless dread of, of something else. Something different. Something greater. Jacob waits there on the banks of Jabbok. And I can imagine, just imagine with me if you will. Night begins to fall. The stars one by one come out. And the evening wind begins to stir in the tops of the trees. And suddenly, somehow, Jacob finds himself on his way, on his way to see here. He finds his, somehow, something happens in the middle of the night where he finds uh, himself in the grip of a strong adversary. With all of his impulse and all of his energy, he turns and begins to grapple with this unknown assailant. You see, he cannot discern his features at night in the shadows of the evening. And he wonders who it is that has now gotten a hold of Jacob. Perhaps he thinks that this is Esau that's snuck into his tent and is beginning to, to uh, war with him or begin to try to get back because of that sin that Jacob once created in his life. Per perhaps he thinks that Esau has stolen a march on him and has now come to execute his vengeance upon him. Upon Jacob and his people. But whoever it is, whether it was Esau or some other uh, person of the night, Jacob begins to enter into a battle with all of his energy and all of his strength. Nothing is heard, I can imagine, save the, save the scraping of their feet upon the stones and the explosion of their, of their breath as the two antagonists begin to struggle to and fro in one another's grip. All night they wrestle one with the other. Neither seemingly can get the upper hand. But at length, the, the, this mysterious antagonist, he puts forth his hand and he touches the thigh of Jacob. You see, that's the, that's the pivot control part of your body. And Jacob now lost it. And in that moment, he became weak and halt and lame. Yet he does not give up in the struggle. My God, 
It seems like some, sometimes in your life, amen, it you're, you're, seems like you're just fighting, and you don't even know what you're fighting. And sometimes it seems like you get wounded by the enemy. Or sometimes it seems like you, uh, you get uh, jarred in one way or another in life. Can I just say this? That's not the time to let go. That's not the time to give up in your walk. That's not the time to quit going to church. That's not the time to, to stop your prayer, your devotion to God. But that's the time when you need to just hold on, amen, in your life and walk with God. You may be at that point like Jacob wondering, Lord, isn't it enough that I have to face my transgression? Isn't it enough that I must uh, again come face to face with my past by meeting Esau? But now here you see, I'm in the middle of fighting something else in my life. There's something else now that, that I have to deal with. Trial on top of trial. A test on top of test. Facing fears on top of now new fears coming across me in my life. But I got to fight and I can't give up. And I've got to win. Why? Because Esau is coming. Can I just stop to encourage somebody here in the house of God today? Can I just say, just hold on. Just hold on in your life. Just hold on. Just hold on. Let me say it again. Just hold on. Amen. There, 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 are, there are fears haunting, but just hold on. Though the storm seems daunting, just hold on. You may not fully understand the situation that you're in in your midnight hour, but my friend, just hold on. Though it's seems as though you're wrestling with life. Just hold on. Hold on, somebody, because your blessing is coming. Hold on, somebody, because victory is going to be yours. Just hold on here today, because God is going to turn that test into a testimony. Hallelujah. Though I have to fight all night, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Oh, praise God. Sometimes you, you just, you, you don't know. You may be just a prayer away from your victory. Just hold on. You may be, amen, just a, just a shout away from your victory. So just hold on. Hallelujah. A victory is coming on the third day. Joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. It may be just around the corner in your life. You may not be able to see it. It may be look just, just like about the size of a man's hand as you're praying for that rain and that victory. But it's coming. It's going to grow. It's headed your direction. Amen. All you have to do is a hold on. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to church. Hold on to your devotion to God. And God is going to give you the victory in your life. It is, it is beginning to dawn upon Jacob now that this is, no, this is no ordinary antagonist. Here is one who may have now, he realizes, here is a person that has the power to bless him. And sometimes, sometimes what you are fighting may be nothing but God himself. But there comes a time, something's going to happen in the middle of your situation, Sister Rose. When it seems like you're fighting and struggling. Amen. But you're, when, once you key in, once that flip switch, once that paradigm shifts in your life in the spirit, you're going to say, hey, why, what I thought is sent here to destroy me, God sent it here to bless me. And that's when your mentality shifts from I'm fighting this, then it shifts to I can't let go of this. I'm struggling with what's going on in my life. But once you key into what God is trying to do, once you begin to realize who is really in control, amen, you begin to say, uh, uh, first of all, you might say, I don't know about this church stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know if God is really in the midst of all of this because now it seems like my life is worse. Now it seems like all hell is broken loose. Now it seems like I don't know, understand what God is doing. But once you realize, amen, what God is attempting to do, what God is bringing, trying to bring to pass in your life, that attitude of, oh, I don't know, I don't know if this is all of God. It turns into God. I can't let go of this. God, I can't let go of my prayer life. I can't let go of, of church. I can't let go of what you want to do in my life. Amen. So, so you, but we got to realize, amen, in our lives that what we're trying to fight oftentimes might be God himself. And what he has sent into our lives may be sent to bless us. 
Here is the one who may have the power to bless him. And sometimes what you are fighting may not be but God himself, for God may be using that test to set you up for a blessing. God may be using that mountain, can I say it, to lift you a little bit higher. Hallelujah. Uh, but God may be using that giant to set you up as a leader of nations. But you got to hold on to him. But you got to trust in God. Trust in God. Can I put it like this? Trust in God's process. Amen. You know, in the prophets of old, whenever God gave them a prophecy, they saw things as though they were going to be. They saw things, if you will, from mountaintop to mountaintop. But God didn't give them the valley in between. Amen. And sometimes when we're in the middle of that valley, God gave me some promises, Sister Rose. God gave us some promises for this church, but God didn't tell me about the valleys. God didn't tell me. Amen. The world we have a church in our basement. God didn't prepare us for that. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, he's going to lead us up to victory. He's going to lead us up to that next promise. He's going to lead us up to that next that next mountaintop. Amen. And I tell you what, we may have to climb. We may have to climb, and it feels like we're climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. But he's, God's going to give us feet like Heinz feet. Amen. Where we can, we can uh, take every step and make it a positive step for God. Amen. And sometimes it seems like every step forward you take is two steps back. But, but we're determined in our heart. We're determined in our spirit. And you got to be determined turn in yours as well. Amen. That I'm not going to let go of you, God, until you see a blessing. Can I put it like this? We're not letting go of God until we see revival. We're not letting go of the Holy Ghost, amen, and God until we see some miracles begin to happen, until we see some chains begin to break, until we see God begin to do what God desires to do. But we're not going to let go until we see that blessing. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, but we have to hold on. You see, this mysterious encounter, when, when, as Hosea put it, Jacob wept and had power over the angel. It shows some of the ways in which spiritual changes are wrought inside of man. One of these ways is by adversity and trial. Here, adversity and trial issue in, in a cha- issues a change in our heart and a newness of our strength. And that was a painful and a desperate and a terrifying all-night struggle that, that Jacob had with that adversary. But before it was over, he discovered that, that the midnight wrestler had the power to be able to bless him. And Jacob still struggled with him. There still was a fight. Make no mistake about it. But he, had, he, had to, he struggled now not to overcome him, but he struggled to hold on to him, to retain him, to secure that blessing. Because he knew if he let it go, the blessing is gone. If he relinquished it, then it was out the window. He said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Even though he was winded, wounded, even though he was hurting, he is determined not to let go. Can I just encourage somebody's faith again? Amen. Can I, can I speak a word to somebody here in this house today? Hallelujah. Uh, you in your own flesh, with your own will, by your own faith, you cannot overcome on your own. So don't try to understand how you're going to overcome it. Don't try to lean onto your own understanding on how you're over, trying to go overcome it. Your job, your only job, your soul, your sole focus is just to hold on. That's all you got to do. All you have to do is to hold on to that promise. Hold on to that blessing. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Amen. All you have to do is to hold on. If you can just hold on, overcoming will come automatically. If you can just hold on, the blessing is going to be yours. But you cannot overcome by yourself. For it's not by your might, you see. It's not going to be by your power, but it's going to be through the spirit of the Lord. God will make you more than a conqueror, but all you have to do is to hold on, hold on to Jesus. Amen. But I'm afraid, here comes Esau. Here he comes. We know he's coming. That's the thing you may fear in your life. 
Fear is the most predominant and most damaging negative emotion in your life. And unless you learn to get rid of it, you're not living your life the way God wants you to. Plain and simple. True Christian discipleship is short-circuited by many of our fears. We must not under, underestimate what damage fear really does do inside of our lives. Fear keeps us from being able to, to love fully, for it's the direct opposite of love. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear in 1 John 4 and 18. And if that's true, then the opposite so can be true. The opposite can be fear can also cast out love. You see, fear places all this attention upon me. That's what it does. Uh, when I'm focused on myself and I'm focused on my concerns, when I'm fearful at what might happen to me, I cannot unreservedly think about other people. Fear focuses us to build walls around our uncertain selves in anticipation of attacks or assaults from life that seldom ever come. Fear keeps us from doing our best and being our best. Ultimately, it keeps us from living our lives as God intended for them to be lived. Fear breaks up marriages. Fear alienates children. Fear tears down friendships and it isolates neighbors. Fear contaminates the workplace and robs peace of a tranquil heart. Fear kills dreams and destroys goals. Fear paralyzes Christian motivation and thus imprisons our faith. It is the single greatest enemy to live in a Christian life, this thing called fear. Ann Landers, who has written over three decades, reports that she receives over 10,000 letters a week with more mail concerning one particular difficulty than any other. Was, a, was it about marital problems or children or finances? It wasn't about any of those things, but it was all about, expressed in different ways, but it was all about fear. Jesus prophesied that towards the end of time, the hearts of men would fail them for fear. Many people drop dead out of sheer fright and terror. You know, phobia is the Greek word for fear. And the dictionary lists hundreds of different kinds of phobias. Uh, acrophobia, the fear of high places. Claustrophobia, uh, uh, the fear of tight, closed spa uh, places. Agoraphobia, a fear of open places. Also the fear of crowds. Ergophobia is a fear of work. Uh, and, uh, and even phobophobia is a fear of fear itself. Uh, but even for the follower of Jesus Christ, there were fears. People fear losing their health or their wealth or their friends or their family or their position in life. But in spite of all of this, I'm going to make a very daring statement. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to climb out on a limb here today. I want to state with conviction that you can live. you can live your life without worry. You can live above fear. Oh, fear might try to creep into our lives. That's natural. That's a part of each and every one of us. But you don't have to, you don't have to live with it. Worry may naturally start to play its harsh chords inside of our minds, but we don't have to go to bed with it at night. For we have a peace here today that passes all understanding. We have a hope. And we have a confidence that this world does not have. We have a blessed assurance, and that's only in him. You see, friend, when, when fear tries to raise its ugly head, when worry and anxiety try to creep into our good night's rest, that's about time that I just begin to hold on. Amen. Uh, I, I, that's begin, I, I begin to hold on a little bit tighter. I begin to hold on a, a little bit longer. I hold on with a vice grip assurance that my faith and trust is all in Jesus Christ. I'm not putting it in this world. I'm not putting it upon my wealth. And guess what? You're not going to shake me. You're not going to budge me. Uh, you're not going to move me. I'm holding on. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold on to my God. I'm going to hold on to my blessing. I'm going to hold Hold on to the one that can make it uh, victorious in my life. Uh, I'm going to hold on to that peacekeeper. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold on to the way maker. I'm going to hold on to the mountain mover. Uh, through all of my heaviness, and I'm going to let it all and give it all unto God. And Scripture says that he will give me my rest. 
But who is there that has not at some point or another experienced this gripping emotion called fear? Indeed, some people are constantly dominated by it. David knew something of it as, as he asked the question, whom shall I fear? David also had discovered that it was possible for a person who was full of fear to be delivered from it completely. For he wrote in Psalms 34 and 4, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. The, the psalmist promises us in Psalms 27 and 1, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? For the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I've discovered, I've discovered that there are two basic kinds of fear in human experience. There's the normal and then there's the abnormal. Or there's the good and the bad. What is a good fear or a normal fear? Well, let me put it like this. A surgeon fears to harm his patient. That's a good fear. <laughs> I want him to fear. <laughs> a pilot takes care of the handling of his aircraft as he fears to harm his passengers through an accident. Maybe a father driving the family on vacation is very cautious because he fears a responsibility that's on his shoulders. The fear of the Lord is another example of having a positive fear. These, you see, these are normal fears. These are fears that, that God created for us to have. They're normal fears that are good and they're healthy, they're productive, help us to be better people. But I'm concentrating, I'm preaching today about, about the bad kind of fear or the fear from which we need to be delivered from and may try to haunt us in our walks with God. God realized that fear would be a deep-rooted problem for mankind. Notice how frequently the Lord says, fear not, or to be strong and of good courage. As we read the Bible, repeatedly we hear God's encouraging words where he says, don't be afraid. That was God's ab admonition to the patriarch Isaac, amen. In Genesis 26 and 24, he says, Fear not, for I am with, me, with thee, and I will bless thee. And when Moses needed strengthening, God spoke these words. He said, Fear not, in Genesis 15 and 1. Joshua himself was a, was a brave leader, and God still promised him. He said in Joshua 1 and 9, Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Again and again in Psalms, God promises that we do not have to be afraid. Even though the earth be removed, we don't have to be afraid in Psalms 46 and 2. Isaiah, perhaps the greatest prophet in the Old Testament, quoted God as saying to his people in Isaiah 41 and 10, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 35 and 4, he says, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come. Yes. Amen. Amen. How, anybody ready for God to come? Hallelujah. Anybody ready for the Lord to just move into your life and your situation? Hallelujah. You may not know it. It may seem like you're wrestling an enemy that you don't understand, but hallelujah, let my God come. Amen. But the key is you got to hold on. Man, again and again in Psalms, it is promised to us. And consistently, the Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Somebody has written that. They said this, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, and no one was there. Amen. Sad all too often, fear rules over our lives, intruding into every situation intruding into every decision that we make. Some people have a fear of failure. In fact, anyone who is conscientious or ambitious or has achieved any success at all must experience the temptation to fear lest he or she should fail. This can be a devastating form of fear. It's like, it's like the fear of responsibility. We may be ambitious and yet fear the very responsibility with the achievement of our ambition may may thrust upon us. Of course, there's always the fear of danger or the fear of harm. Some people are afraid of thunderstorms or traveling by sea or air. Others are afraid of heights or depths, while others are afraid of tight places. These are all phobias that haunt us. They're very real. I'm not taking any of that away, but I'm trying to tell somebody God's greater. 
Amen. God is bigger. Hallelujah. If we learn to hold on to him. I have talked with a number of people who have a gnawing fear because they, they may have some sort of a skeleton in the closet. They were concerned about some past sin or some sort of indiscretion in their lives. Even though they had been forgiven by God or had been taking care of that problem in their past, they're still fearful that Esau's coming. One of the worst fears of our day is that fear of the future. With every passing day, we become older. Our hairs turn gray or we lose them, one or the other. And we can wonder how we are going to live in our small annuity or live on our savings or what's going to ha happen with our Social Security or time or, or pension funds. We become so fearful that we can be dependent upon others. Or what will happen to us when our children move to another city? Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> but many precious people are haunted by fear of a mental disorder or a physical disease. Perhaps we know those who have been afflicted with these very real illnesses, and this has been somehow instilled inside of our own hearts. What if it happens to me? What if I end up like my grandpa? <laughs> what, if I, what if that happens in my life as well, like I've seen it happen in my family? The author of Hebrews wrote vividly about the fear even of death. He stated in Hebrews 2 and 15, he said, And deliver them through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This is a common fear among all people. What, whatever fears we have, whatever I've listed here today, we can be delivered from these through the power of the Holy Ghost as we begin to accept God into our lives. Amen. And on, on one occasion, Paul cried out. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Far too often, fear tries to rule over us, intruding into nearly every situation. Fear would fray our bodies, and it would destroy our minds, rob us of the sleep that we need to begin to mend them. <laughs> fear masquerades under many names called doubt, indecision, procrastination, alarm, timidity, anxiety. In dress clothes, fear becomes terror or horror or shock, or consternation. Fear poses as a friend, and when it does, it claims to be prudence, or caution, or care, or diligence, or discretion. But if we open the house of our lives to fear, we admit a guest who will not soon leave us. Faith is the comrade who will serve us best against fear. For fear is a shadow, and faith is of light. Amen. Let me tell you what fear does. Fear makes us unhappy, it binds us into bondage, and the effects are always debilitating and disruptive. Fear undermines our health. In fact, if we allow fear to grip us, we become tense and our emotions upset. Job vividly wrote about this in Job 4, 14 through 15. He said, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Many Christians are physically ill through fear and anxiety. They need not remain ill if they put their confident faith and trust in Almighty God through Christ. Fear breaks down the nervous system, affects the body. Fear can take our healthy appetites from us. It can thoroughly dis organize our digestive system. It can grip you to the degree that it actually affects your countenance. Fear, of course, paralyzes the will. When fear grips us, our willpower can be crippled. Sometimes we do little or we do nothing. Fear also robs us of our sleep. Hey, man, have, have, have you not had fear that this type of experience in your life? At, at times, all of us have lain awake just worrying what's going to happen. The word fear itself is an Anglo-Saxon word which originally meant to choke. If I were to seize you by the throat and press as hard as I could, cutting off your air supply, I would be doing to you what sustained worry and fear can do. But somebody has said that the greatest blessing which one could bestow upon mankind, the greatest contribution which one could make for the well-being of mankind would be to devise some way to banish fear from man's life. The greatest remedy, the only complete remedy, of course, is what the Bible 
offers us. Uh, it's not what the doctors are. It's not appeal. It's not some some prescription somewhere. No, but it's what it's what the Bible offers us, and that is our faith, our full trust and confidence and dependence upon God, and the casting of all of our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. Amen. And it is important, too, to remember that fear and worry are absolutely useless. Whether things that we dread come to pass or not, our fearing them in advance can in no respect hold them back or diminish their power. Nothing is as useless as fear. That is what Christ emphasizes about the folly of worry. I think there is a humor in what he says on the subject. He says, which of you, he says, by taking thought can add cubit to his stature? That's what he says on the subject of taking anxious thoughts about the future. Nothing you can do about it anyway. So you might as well put your faith and your trust in God and give it to the one who can do something about it. Amen. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof, he said. You cannot cross the bridge before you come to it. The greatest cure of all, the greatest cure for, of all for fear is the trust and the care and the providence of our God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. How many times have we been overwhelmed with fear of a problem or situation which actually could not or would not do us any good? It would not do us any harm if only we would advance instead of sitting down and retreating in fear. There are many fears that easily try to beset us. The fear of death, which blocks our abundant living. The fear of guilt, which closes off our forgiveness. The fear of meaninglessness, which deflects our purpose in life. But at the bottom of our feelings, we must determine whether or not we want to be brave and to have courage or to be set free from our fears. Jesus emphasized that we can trust him and be free from fear, Matthew chapter 2. We do have a choice today. We do have the ability to make a decision. Amen. We do have a choice to make because when we refuse to pay the price to allow God to free us from fear, we choose then to live in cowardness, in self-pity, in that feeling sorry for ourselves and implying that God is not good enough. We're saying, really, if we fear, we're saying God's not big enough to handle it. We're saying God can't, God can't control that. We are, God, but God has made his promise, and he's offered his strength so that we can go on past the roaring lions that he will, uh, that try to uh, take our, our, our spiritual growth, amen, in our God. You know, God would have us to break free of fear in order to live joyous and abundant lives. But Jesus, Jesus gave us a model on how to overcome fear. Very simple. Two steps. Anybody ready? Here comes Esau. He's coming. What are we going to do? Amen. First thing, the first thing is first, and there is no option about this choice. The first option is, is we have got to face our fear. We've got to name it and recognize it and face it. We must call them forth and begin to stare them down. Oh, hallelujah. I know it's quiet in here. I hope I'm not boring anybody or putting anybody to sleep here today. But we, we've got to call them forth and stare them down. So we sometimes deny that we even have fears. But we're all locked up by some. One of mine is the fear of failure. What if I don't get out of this basement? What if we don't move forward? Amen. But I can't let fear control my actions. I can't uh, give God be for us who can be against us. Amen. I got to keep my trust in God. Amen. I know there's craziness going on in this world. That I, I picked the absolutely worst time to plant a church. Amen. With, with, with COVID-19, everything going on. Amen. My God. I even had a couple of people I talked to. They're like, oh, man, I'm, I don't know. I'm glad I'm not you. I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't start a church like you did right now, you know, and those are that can be very disparaging. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to act in fear. Amen. we're not going to be crippled by fear. Amen. But we're going to move forward in faith in God. Why? Because God is victorious, because God is greater, because God can give us hope, because God can speak peace. Can God can heal our bodies. Amen. And God can do only what he can do. But first, we've got to face our fears. 
What fear do you need to face in your life? Fear of rejection? Oh, I, I'm not step, I hope I'm not stepping on these toes. When, when I say these things, I'm not thinking of anybody in this house today. But the fear of, reje- the fear of losing control? The fear of looking foolish or not measuring up? Is it the fear of maybe not being s- accepted or maybe the fear of being alone or maybe the fear of change in your life? Maybe a fear of death or, or, or maybe a fear of not having enough or maybe a fear of just having to start all over again. Whatever it is, you've got to be able to face your fears. And the first step is always to confront the fear, standing up and facing it boldly, even as Jesus faced the conspiring Pharisees and the fearful cross. We have got to name the demon in order to tame the demon. We have got to face the fear in order to erase the fear. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't say it any other way. I hope you get what I'm saying here today. After we, after we face our fear, step two, we've then got to be able to place it into the hands of God. The only effective way to get rid of our fears is to be able to give them to God. Place your fear in God's hands, even as you would place your hand in the hand of a friend. The psalmist David was right. Even though we may be walking through fearful valleys and threaten, that may try to threaten our lives, we need not fear today because the eternal presence of God is with us. Though we may be facing all kinds of fears, they they will not rob us because we can't give them to God. Amen. He is with us. Indeed, courage is fear that has said its prayers. That's all courage is. It's just fear that said its prayers. Amen. You know, a, a Sunday school teacher asked her young class, she said, where is God? One of the girls One girl quickly replied, in heaven, of course. But a little boy protested. He said, no, he said. He said, God's God's in the bathroom. (laughs) Now shocked, the teacher asked what he meant. Well, said the child, every morning I hear my father knocking at the bathroom door saying, my God, are you still in there? Can I tell somebody today that God's in the bathroom? God's in the kitchen. God's in the bedroom. God's in the living room. Can I say it like God's in the basement? Amen. God is in the office. He's in the plant or the factory. He's wherever. Uh, There is no place where God is not. And simply alone, that truth can chase away your fear. And because of this, it should give us confidence today that we can walk this journey in life. We can walk no matter where that path leads us, no matter where that that crooked road takes us in life. We should have the confidence in God and not be able to fear what may come down that road. Because God's with us. If we're holding on. If we're holding on. If we did not let go. And say, God, I want to control it. No, you let it go and you hold on to God. Don't hold on to your problem. Don't hold on to to the mess of your stress. Don't hold on to the craziness in this world that's going on right now. Don't hold on to to, to the reports. Whose report will you believe? I want to believe the report of the Lord. Don't hold on to to, to the, the things of this world. You let those things go. You've got to hold on to God. Why? Because that's where my, my blessing is. That's where, that's where my victory is going to be. And sometimes it seems like a struggle. Sometimes it seems like a fight. Amen. But if you hold on, the blessing is going to be yours today. Amen. You know, we're going to stand here today. and I'm, I'm closing out this short story. Jacob looked and he said, here comes Esau. Or in other words, here comes my greatest fear. And then guess what happened? His fear met him in the face. And what did his fear do? His fear fell on his neck and kissed him. That's what happened. 
Please notice that God brought him to a place where Esau was. God brought him to the place to face his fear. There was no way around it. He had to face it. He had to approach it. But God showed Jacob that the thing he had feared for all of this time was the very beginning for many of the blessings in his life to come. It was a new starting point for Jacob. It was a new day. It was a renewed relationship. It was a a, a renewed uh, uh, devotion with God. Amen. Uh, Because God was with him. Because he would not let go until the Lord blessed him. And this is the same way with the way we live our lives today. Every day we wake up and we think, in one way or one form or another, we think, here comes Esau. Here he comes. I can feel it. If we could only see the total picture here today in your life, as you are holding on to God, if you could only see the end from the beginning, amen, if you can just hold on to the Lord. Now let me close with this story. Then we'll have a chance, just an opportunity to talk to the Lord. One of our missionaries to the Philippines was on the list to be assassinated by some rebels. And when they went to shoot him, there he was driving his car. And they were prevented by a thick fog that just came in very suddenly. And the rebels said in this divine intervention that they had to leave this guy alone. But the missionary, on the other hand, he was in the middle of the fog. And what was he doing? He was complaining to God. He said, God, I'm trying to do your work. I'm trying to live my life the best I can. And here I am just another day just trying to get to where I want to go. And all of a sudden, this fog comes in my life. Now, all of a sudden, i got to slow things. This is going to ruin my schedule. It's going to ruin my day. God doesn't understand my life. He doesn't understand what's going on. When all of a sudden, in the fullness of the picture, God was saving his hide. If he could have only seen the whole picture, how foolish. How foolish he would have been to fear that fog. Sometimes our greatest fears, sometimes our greatest obstacles can either be the biggest stumbling block or it can be the greatest stepping stone that God is bringing to pass inside of our lives. What is the difference between a stumbling block and a stepping stone? The difference is, is what are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? Amen. Don't struggle it. Don't, don't, Don't try to fight it. But you hold on to it. Let the struggle be to hold on. Amen. Not to fight it. Not to kick against it. Not to prick against it. Amen. But to to hold on and to be determined in your heart and your mind. Amen. I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to quit serving God. I'm not going to quit my devotion. I'm not going to quit my prayer life. I'm not going to quit my standard of holiness. I'm not going to quit my my life with God. Amen. But I'm going to serve Him. I'm going to hold on to Him. Amen. Because I want to experience more of God. I want to see more of His blessings. I want to see, I want to experience more of the the fruit of the Lord moving in my heart and my life. I am going to hold on to Jesus. I'm going to hold on to His goodness. I'm going to hold on to Him. When? Until He blesses me. Until He turns around and I see the deliverance until we see the hand of the Lord until morning comes hallelujah in my life until I see that giant fall until I see that mountain moved until I see the deliverer begin to show up in the middle of my life I'm gonna hold on to him I'm gonna I'm gonna press on in the spirit amen I'm gonna move forward I'm gonna go up hallelujah and my, as my brother and as my sister I'm gonna hold on with you and I'm gonna believe with you amen and I'm not gonna give up on you Hallelujah. And we're moving forward together. We're moving forward as a church. Amen. And if, like I said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Oh, God, we love you today. Amen. With every with every hand lifted in the air, every heart, amen, set upon God. Lord, I love you today. Lord, I want to I hold on to you, Jesus. I don't want to let
let go of your blessing. I don't want to let go of your promise. I don't want to let go, God, of what you are desiring to do with my life. God, I love you and I praise you. Hallelujah. That's it. Let's just talk to him for a moment. As Sister Glick begins to sing, amen, why don't you make your own altar today? Talk to the Lord. Let the Lord begin to move in your heart and in your life. God, God, I don't want to fear anymore. God, I don't want to worry. I don't want anxiety. Amen. Lord, hallelujah. Let Esau, God, be the blessing in my life. Yes, God, hallelujah. That's it. My God, in the name of Jesus, I give it all to you today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I I need you, Lord. God, I want to cast my cares. I want to cast my worries. I want to cast my fear. God, I want to cast, Lord, activate my faith. Loosen my faith, God, today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, God, to give it to you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Angels circle round. Oh, come on, somebody. Esau's coming. Esau's coming. Oh, hallelujah in the name of Jesus. But it's not going to be what you fear. It's not going to be what you think. Esau may be coming around the corner, but you don't have to fear it today. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be, it's going to open up doors in your life. Oh, hallelujah. You got to hold on. Yes, God. Yes, God. I give it to you today. I offer it to you today, God. I yield it to you today, God. Take it, Lord, today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. So, oh, I need you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, God. I give it all to you. I offer it all to you, God. I yield it to you today. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Yes, God, we give it to you today. We offer it to you today. We yield it to you today. Take it, Lord, my worries, my doubts, Lord. I cast in my cares upon you today, Jesus. For you care for me. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Lord, I feel your touch, God, in your spirit in this house today. Right before. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. You are holy. Let your healing, God. God, let loosen faith, God, in this place. God, I pray, Lord, let God arise and the enemy be scattered today. I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, God, and I praise you. Jesus, in your name. I love you, Lord. I praise you. My God, my God, my God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. to his presence today. If you can just touch him today, hallelujah. My God, don't let go, church. Don't let go, saint of God. Don't give up, friend. Don't give up today. Don't give up on him. Don't give up on him. Hallelujah. It may be a fight. It may be a struggle. But don't give up. The blessing's coming. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And they cry. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're holy. You are holy. Oh, so holy.
Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I worship you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I praise you. I worship you. Lord, do your work in this house. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your touch. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Paul said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Can't remember who said it, but it was said before. It's, it's not illegal to run the Boston Marathon with 20-pound blocks of ice. Might cool you off a little bit. Stop every now and then. I don't know, maybe a couple drops, but it, it will slow you down. Nobody that I've known or seen has run in the Boston Marathon with two 20-pound blocks of ice. But yet, sometimes, that's what we do in our lives. May not be sin. May not be something that we are transgressing against the Lord. But yet, those weights seem to slow down our Christian walk. They slow down our spiritual maturity. They slow down and distract us and so we don't put in the prayer time or we don't we don't maybe read the word like we should or we're, we're, we're missing in one area or another in our life why because we're just we're weighed down with fear with life with things that are happening with stress whatever it is it just weighs us down and slows us up what, what did Paul say slay it aside I know that's easier said than done but it's a challenge. It's the challenge of our hour with everything that's going on between uh, health and between our nation, between everything that's happening. Can we, can we lay it aside? Can we lay it aside? We can. We can. Why? God died for it. He laid down his life so that we can lay down those weights. I used to do a youth exercise where I would teach on the same subject, and I'd get a young person, and I'd first thing I do is I put a basketball in his hand. <laughs> Next thing I do, I put a ghetto blaster, let him carry a ghetto blaster. Then I then I put a couple other objects, maybe some some gym clothes, maybe some other things, wrap them around his body, and before you know it, that 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 poor kid, he had so much holding on, so much so much baggage, he couldn't even couldn't even lift up his hands to worship God. Bro, you just need to let go of your weight. You just need to start letting go of some of your distractions in life so you, so you can lift up your hands and to worship God again. So you can let go of everything that's going on. Trust God. Why, whatever happens, we're moving forward. In our lives, and our walks with God. Whatever goes on, we're moving forward. Amen. We know how the end of this book ends. Amen. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. That's the bottom line. That's where our confidence is. Our confidence and assurance isn't in the things of this world. Amen. But it's in Jesus Christ. And that report hasn't changed. Amen. Hallelujah. And that report is never going to change. And I thank God for the consistency that's found in the Word of God. That we can trust in, that we can rely upon, and that we can lay our burdens to Him today. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, so good to have everybody in the house of the Lord and, and to have the Spirit of the Lord in this house today as well. I felt a good spirit in this place, and I want to thank each and every one of you all again for being in the house of God. Thank God it's such a beautiful sunny day outside. Hallelujah. It's not cold and shivering or anything like that. Amen. And, and, and God's given us a beautiful day with beautiful people to spend it with and uh, to experience a beautiful Spirit of God that's in this house as well. So thank you each and every one of you for being here in the house. Make sure you shake somebody's hand and uh, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus name. Amen.